guest, and she is on a TV show called Couples Therapy. It's on VH1. I don't know if you've ever heard of it. No. Um, but she specializes in, well, right now, is these very dysfunctional celebrity couples. And it's on a TV show if you want to look it up. She's, she's on her way in right now. But if, if you have any specific questions about relationships or... Or just the show, because it's very show. bizarre. <laughs> Maria, did, Maria, has this person been on before? Because I have a memory of that. Um, you are absolutely it? right, Randy. She was here, um, I think, last month. Yeah. I'm gonna leave my I'm gonna leave my space because I remember seeing that, and I just uh, you may or may not remember that I've been married to the same woman for yes, 33, 33 years. Yes, I remember. So I don't need her. So I'm gonna leave my slot for somebody else. <laughs> well, no, it's not like anyone's trying to come in, Randy. So uh, I know. No, so but um, I do. I recall. I recall that. Yeah, she's an interesting woman too. You might want to tell Anthony really quickly that it's just. It's the, dead to death. Yeah. You're dead to me. I know. Yeah. Um, so I don't know if that'll I'm make I'm gonna a move so she can come in. Do you know what I mean? Did she come? She's coming right now. So okay. maybe we can just do a quick. Two hundred and twenty-six views already. Good for you. <clears throat> oh wow! Fantastic. Yeah, that's a good one, right? Well, that, that was like one of my best so far. I and like all the Google people. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I think so. No, I'm floated. Yeah, I'm floated. So I'm I'm okay right now. You want me? Um, we can talk to you for a few minutes. Do you want to? I May as well. To. May as well. You're here. How, how are you? It's good. good to see you. Good to see you. I like this too. red. Red. Thank you. Um, we'll post this to you. And we'll you know ask about the show and stuff. And we have a couple of people in the hangout today, but it's Halloween and it's you know there's. All kinds of stuff going on back yeah. east, and I think a lot of people are probably um, kind of caught up in some of that, that sure. news. So we'll just do a really quick one since you're okay. here. One Sounds tip. great. I okay. love it. Uh, so let me introduce you to a couple of guys that are here in the hangout. Hey, good morning. It's Maria from the Fox 11 Newsroom here in Los Angeles. And Dr. Jen Berman is joining us. She's back. Uh, Dr. Berman is on a show called Couples Therapy. It's on VH1. It's kind of a crazy show. But um, if you're not familiar with it, I encourage you to check it out if you want to see how some other people uh, conduct their <laughs> lives and relationships. I want to introduce you to some some uh, somebody here who's been married for 33 years, and I think he was in our last hangout, actually, Dr. Berman, Randy Resnick. He is in Bordeaux, hey. France, and I uh, congratulate you and your wife, Randy, for a wonderful uh, marriage and many years to, to come still for you guys. This is Stephen. Stephen is in York. He's in England. Stephen, you're not married, are you? Uh, no, I'm separated. You're separate. Oh, okay. Well, you're All talking right. to the right person. You may be talking <laughs> to the right person today. And if you're watching on air, um, I see you. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure you uh, plus and comment, please. And if you have a question, this is a great opportunity to ask an expert uh, a question that you maybe haven't been able to ask your spouse or, or someone else in your life. So tag me or anyone in the Hangout or my Fox Los Angeles. Okay, and we'll get it to Dr. Berman, which brings me actually to a question I was given earlier for you, and this one is from Kim. Kim Beasley asks, uh, Kim, you just, you, you're in the hangout. I was just about to ask your question. Do you want to ask it yourself? Sure, sure. I can ask it. Uh, Kim, in Kansas City, by the way. Hi, Kim. <laughs> hi. Uh, for those who put their career first and starting to uh, look at getting into relationships and all like that, what are some tips or some suggestions that you have uh, for them? Um, I am a big believer in figuring out who you are before you get yourself into a relationship. And I think that it, it's a great question. And I think that, you know, I, I also have a radio show on, on Cosmo. And this actually came up the other night because I was talking to a woman who had a great career and met a guy who she really liked and was thinking about kind of giving it all up to follow him to medical school. And I think that it's wow. so important to have your own thing and to have your partner have their own thing because two halves don't make a whole. So really to make sure that you establish yourself and then, you know, once you've established yourself to try to find that balance. And I think that that's always the, the trickiest part, you know, and I say that as, as a working wife and a working mom, but, you know, finding that balance is always a challenge, but, you know, it's kind of like they say, you know, it takes a village and the more support that you have, the easier that becomes. Mm. Okay, so really 
you have to find yourself Absolutely. no matter what. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Career wise, have you found yourself, Kim? Have you? Um... <laughs> <laughs> really? Come on! Yes. 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 <laughs> I am. I'm a very strong-minded person. Yes. Very strong will. Yes. And I speak my mind. I'm. I'm tactful, but I speak my mind, and that sometimes comes across as um, a difficult person for me. Sure. And so it, it's kind of interesting because. Uh, me and sometimes think I'm just too harsh and, and, and don't approach me. And you know, Kim, I think that some of the skills that work really well for us women in our careers don't always work as well in our personal lives. Yes, I and, agree. And kind of yeah. like that yeah. balance of mm -hmm. speaking your mind and being authentic and being true to yourself, but also um, not hurting people's feelings and not being so aggressive that you bulldoze the person who you care about. And you know, it's, it's, it, it really is, it's a skill to learn how to communicate in a way where other people can hear it because you can say the same thing two different ways. One is going to have, is going to result in a partner that's receptive and one is going to result in someone who's like, I don't want to be with this woman. Like she's mm -hmm. no thanks. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll pass. And I think it really is in the delivery. Steven, did you have a question too? Yes. Um, Jen, do you find that, um, Celebrity couples um, have the same kind of uh, relationship problems that normal couples have, or ordinary couples rather. I think that celebrities have a lot of the same problems, and, and as you'll see on my show on VH1 Couples Therapy, it's, you know, it's communication, it's trust, it's jealousy, it's boundaries, it's all that sort of stuff, plus they have sort of this whole additional, um, this, this other layer of stuff that has to do with the media and about sort of fame and power and kind of who has power in the relationship and who doesn't, and also sort of how the media affects the relationship last season. Um, Casey and Vienna talked a lot about having experiences where the media sort of created stories that weren't true about them and how it affected their relationship and also Linda Hogan gave a great example where she had gone for a jog and she sat down on a bench and was just exhausted and sweaty and someone took a picture of her and said she was partying too hard and she was depressed because of her because of her divorce and it's there's a whole other level of media scrutiny that that they have to to cope with that adds talking about the show I know that we had talked about them last time, but there seems to be so much attention on the Courtney Stodden, uh, Doug, Hutchinson. Doug Hutchinson marriage. And if you yeah. guys don't know, if you're not familiar with Courtney, she was 16 at the time. They were kind. Of, they were in the tabloids because she was 16, he was 50. He was in that movie Green Mile, I think. And, and in Lost, he's, and a, he's in a very Lost, talented yeah. actor. Yes. Um, so, how, I I didn't know. I just. What's the latest with them, by the way? The the are latest they, with them, they are they're going strong. They are. And yeah, wow. it's you know it's. I think one of the things that that is really fascinating about the relationship that Steve and I were just talking about mm -hmm. over there mm -hmm. is that their relationship is not what you expect it to be. I mm -hmm. came in even as a therapist with my own bias, expecting right. Courtney to be a powerless victim, mm -hmm. but actually Courtney has a lot of power in this relationship. Mm -hmm. And one of the things I had to work on in mm -hmm. therapy with this couple is Doug getting more power. Oh, Doug is so afraid of being the controlling older husband that he doesn't make boundaries mm -hmm. with her. When she crosses the line, mm -hmm. she he doesn't tend to speak up. How I don't know how you were able, like for me, I'm not a therapist, I'm not a professional, but I, it would have taken every ounce of me to not say, you two shouldn't be married. You should really just, you need to just go your separate ways, let this person grow up, and you need to grow up even though you're 50. I mean, you know, I I, I, I don't know. Well, That's, you know, what I did How as do a, you find the balance? Of, I was very honest with them as a therapist, and I, I my promise to them was that being there in my facility that A, I would always be honest and B, that I would do anything I could to help them to better their relationship. They did, they decided to have this relationship. My job isn't to mm -hmm. decide whether they should or not, but I did tell them, I, I I told Doug, I told Courtney, and I told Courtney's mother, Krista, that I felt it was the wrong decision for them to allow her at 16 to marry. I think that that was not, I think she developmentally needed more time, but that's a done deal. Mm -hmm. Can't go back in time. This is a couple who who genuinely does love each other. They're very devoted to one another, mm -hmm. but they have issues that need to be worked on, and that's my job as a therapist. Hmm. You know, as as a therapist, a lot of the time people come into my office who mm -hmm. are from different religions or have mm -hmm. different beliefs or mm -hmm. different morals or values, and it's not my job mm -hmm. to try to change that, but to work with them and help them. 
I think we touched on this last time, and I'm sorry if you guys have a question, just get my attention, okay? And Anthony just uh, joined the room. Anthony is in Sacramento. And Anthony, if you have a question, let me know. But I feel like it's beneficial when couples break up to have a therapist. Absolutely. And um, have you seen many of that? Uh, uh, absolutely. That situations? And, and I talked about a little bit in last week's episode that as a therapist, it's the misconception is that my job is always to keep couples together, mm -hmm. but sometimes it's it's to help them not to be together. And, and that's something that, that came up this season mm -hmm. a lot with Tiny and Jojo. Jojo's mm -hmm. battling alcoholism and Tiny has enabled him. And Tiny came to the conclusion during our time together that if he that if he was going to continue to drink, you, last last uh, episode she said, you know, if you're going to continue to drink, I don't know if I can stay with you. And mm -hmm. it's the first time where she has said that. So sometimes my job is to help people to, when they make that conclusion, when they reach that conclusion, to help them to have a healthy breakup. Mm -hmm. um, yes, go ahead, Randy. Uh, I would, I'd like to ask, Doctor, um, what percentage would you say both for celebrity and non-celebrity difficulties in marriage are related to substance abuse? Wow, that's a, that's a great question. Um, you know, it, it would be hard for me to give a statistic, but I would say that I mean, there is a lot of substance abuse in Hollywood, and especially when you have hmm. people who get fame. I think the earlier people get their fame, the more likely they are hmm. to abuse a substance, and it, it tends to be more available, and they tend to not... You know, it's part of the culture. When you have these 20-somethings who are mm -hmm. making millions of dollars, the the drugs and the alcohol flow freely. Mm -hmm. And, you know, one of the biggest problems with celebrities and substance abuse is that there's they surround themselves with yes people right. whose livelihood depends on continuing to enable them. So mm -hmm. it makes it a lot harder. A lot of the time celebrities will, will go further and their rock bottom tends to be lower because mm -hmm. no one says no to a celebrity. Everybody just wants to be there and, and be part of the party. Well, case in point, we talk about Lindsay Lohan on the news all the time. Yeah. And, you know, we wonder where her parents are and all this. But, yeah. but to a degree, I suppose they are financed. This is bad off. By, Absolutely. By, right. So... Anytime you have a child, mm -hmm. even if it's an adult child who mm -hmm. is supporting both mm -hmm. their parents, those parents have lost their power because right. they're financially dependent on that mm -hmm. kid. Oh, it's mm -hmm. fascinating. Fascinating. It's like looking in the and watching your show, like you're, but it's, it's, you know. And I think it's very like, identifiable. Right. I think that there isn't a couple who won't find something or someone on the show that they identify with. All right, you guys. Um, I think that's all we have time for today with Dr. Berman, but um, interesting. Mm -hmm. Oh, did you have another question? Did you have another question, Kim? Yeah, I, I had another question from the standpoint of <laughs> career woman question again. <laughs> you, you brought up earlier about how uh, I believe one woman was thinking about leaving her career. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, as career women, you know, we fight real hard to make it up the corporate ladder or get our own business started, and to make a sacrifice to leave that for a relationship, it can be real hard. What are some things that um, I guess can pre prepare us for that? I'm not saying that we will leave our business or our career, yeah. but what are some things that, what are some options that we could um, work on or think about in, in that regard? Well, I think logistically when you own your own business and you can make your own hours, that's definitely a plus. It makes it a little bit more um, flexible, although at the same time when it is your business, as a friend of mine once said, you know, when you own your own business, you get to pick which 24 hours a day you want to work, <laughs> you know, and it's like, yeah, it's, it's, it's always on you. At the same time, really the key is finding a partner who respects that you have something yeah. you're passionate about and mm -hmm. someone who is not looking just for a cheerleader, mm -hmm. but for an equal partner and who can respect what what you do and what you bring to the table I what think that's key what about if like let, let's say just a scenario hypothetical Kim that there's someone that is wanting to have a relationship with with Kim a business owner couldn't you use a rule of thumb like okay well you your business is more successful than mine so therefore then maybe I will go to you rather than you give up what you're doing to come to me? I mean, could you make I that think, kind of compromise? I think, I, I think that when you give up something you're passionate about, mm -hmm. even if it's for someone you love, I think down the line you end up resenting them. 
-hmm. And I think you end up re you mm -hmm. end up regretting it. And I think it's one thing to say, you know, I have a business that I run, and, and we're having a child, and you know, I'm going to cut back for a little while because mm -hmm. I want to focus on being a parent, and then I'll rev back up when my kid is in school. That's very different to me than giving it all up. I think that when you give it all up for another person, if that's not what you really want to do, then mm -hmm. I think it, it tends to lead to resentment. Wow, that's really hard. I have heard of long distance relationships and I have I have a very good friend where this happened. She lived in Hawaii, her husband lived in New York City. She was a flight attendant, yeah, which helps, sure, because they're able to you know, fly. She used a, a, an airplane like a car. Um, yeah. but ultimately when she finally did move to New York, gave up, you know, a lot of things. You're right. Yeah. Like it just it didn't work, but yeah. And most people I know, and that's and I see more and more of that, and I get more calls on the um, Cosmo Radio mm -hmm. about that because of the economy. People don't necessarily; they're not always able to live where they want to live, and a mm -hmm. lot of couples are being separated and are having to live in different mm -hmm. states or different cities in order to maintain jobs and maintain mm -hmm. income. It's not a good long-term solution no. at, at all. I, I have not seen it work. For right. couples who do it for years on end, it just it, it you can't maintain the intimacy and the closeness no. that you need. I agree. I agree. That's a tough one. Yeah. That is a tough one. Um, did you guys have any other questions? Um, I had kind of a I have a, a question. Um, what do you do when your your spouse is having a tough time at work, and you want to be supportive, and almost to the point where you're like. You need to just find a different job because you're not happy at this job. But then, but you don't want to say that necessarily. But how do you be there for them without cutting them? D yeah. But by the by asking questions instead mm -hmm. of telling them what to do. Right. We tend to when when a spouse tells us what to do, we tend to get a little bit rebellious <laughs> in, right. in nature. Uh -huh. Whereas if if a spouse says, you know, have you thought about another job or, you know, you know that I would support you if you decided that you wanted to get something else, like I'm here for you, to kind of make it available and, and make it an option without telling him what to do is, mm. is a good way to go. But also to understand that sometimes people just need to complain and get it off their chest and not problem solve. You know? <laughs> but how do you make that, as the spouse listening to that, yeah. how do you make it so that you don't start worrying and then you start like going, oh my gosh. You're only human. Right. You know, when, so you're, when, you when your spouse is struggling, right. you're going to struggle to some mm -hmm. degree. You're okay. going gonna, to, you feel for them and it's, you're, you're in it together. It, it, it's a partnership. And right. so if he's in pain, you're going to be in pain to some degree as well. Mm -hmm. But really just to kind of be there and to be able to reflect what you're hearing. Because sometimes as, as a partner, the best thing we can do is to hold up the mirror to our partner and say, mm -hmm. this is what I'm seeing. This is what I'm reflecting back. You seem unhappy. You seem like you don't really want to be working here anymore. You seem mm -hmm. like this isn't a, a, a good situation for you. And sometimes mm -hmm. that's, a, that's the best that you can do mm -hmm. so they can come to their own conclusions. Okay. All right. Good stuff. Good stuff. And we didn't even have to pay for that. Yeah. That was awesome. <laughs> Thank you. That was really great information. Thank you. And Kim, I think you'll really like the Cosmo show. If you have Sirius XM, it's channel 109. Oh, yeah. Oh, I don't. Yeah. It's, uh. it's all call in advice. Oh, yeah. that's fantastic. Yeah. Okay. Dr. Berman, thanks so much for visiting us again. My pleasure. Thanks so much for having me. Oh, great. Well, thank you guys for hanging out. Bye. We'll see you next thanks, time. Thanks, guys. Okay. Bye. Bye. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you. Shaka? Oh, darn. We forgot to get a picture. Hey, you guys. That was really... We forgot really to get a really... picture. Oh, you know why? Because she's here often, and I guess I just... Um, yeah. The ones that was okay. are here often. Uh, but you were able to make it for a second. Good, I'm glad. I was just about to ask your question too, Kim. That was hilarious. Um, I'm going to go get Dr. Art Gray. Dr. Gray is also a clinical psychologist. I, I can't remember exactly what his title is, but um, he's been on with us once before. Um, he's also a, um, a minister. So let me go get him. He always gives us a different perspective, and I like to talk to him usually after we talk to Larry Elder. I don't know if you are familiar with Larry Elder. Mm. Kim, I think you are. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, let me go get him really quickly, okay, and I'll be right back. Okay. Oh, I have a, oh, I have a 9 o'clock. That's right.
Well, maybe I'll get uh, Shaka to sit with him for a second. I'll be right back, okay? Okay. You can't always bat at that. You cannot stop. So while we're waiting here, um, I'd like uh, an opinion or two on the video quality that I'm transmitting right now because I'm using a new device I just got. It's called the Logitech. It's a. It's not a webcam. It's a conference cam. It's very good, Randy. It's very good. And yeah, it looks video, good. Vi video and audio. You, of course, all look beautiful as usual. The audio. <laughs> <laughs> the audio should be better than average. I, you know, your audio is excellent coming back. Uh, how is it going? Uh, yours is very good. Um, everybody's is quite good. Kim's was very good as well. I'm Thank actually on the Mac. Um, ten, yeah, Macs tend to be better than PCs for audio, and uh, you know they've got um, they've got high res cameras anyway. So. so, how long have you been in France then, uh, Randy? About thirty-two years. Wow, I'm not, I'm not new to the game. Well, I've been. I love France. I mean, I go there quite often on holiday, so it's very obviously it's very easy for us to get there from the UK. Um, okay, now. Um... Doctor is in the house. No, not yet. This is our microphone. Yeah, you remember this is our microphone. This is our camera. Hello. <laughs> no, listen. So I might have to. I'm going to get up here in just a second, but I just want to introduce you again, and you may be able to just chit chat with them here while I run in, and then I'll come back. But. Okay. Um, hey, it's Maria from the Fox Seven Newsroom here in Los Angeles, and I've got Dr. Art Gray with us. Um, Art has been with us before. Art's minister. He's a <laughs> positive. Um, he's you're kind of like a coach, life, and coach, life coach. That's what I do. I'm a life coach. And uh, you have a book um, that we were going to talk a little bit about today, or? Well, actually, it's I don't have a book. I just have a blog. A blog. I'm writing things like that. Um, I'm gonna yes, you I'm gonna run into the to the set. Do you wanna sit here for just a second and just but you have to get on the set too, yes? Yeah, I got some makeup and I gotta do some prep. Okay. If you have to go, um he probably could do it on his own. But um if you have some questions for art, this is a good time good time to ask him some questions. Um Shaka, you're familiar with Is this your orange for Is this your orange? Okay, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Take an orange. They grow on trees. Well, they were like, "Don't take that orange." You do you think those grow on trees? Uh, yeah, they. There's no trees in here. That's all. Yeah, that that's problematic. We do have an atrium though. Oh, we do. Yeah, upstairs, second floor. I've never been to the second floor. Oh, it's beautiful. Oh, it's beautiful. Yeah, it's a good place to sit out and eat lunch during okay. the day. Only as good as my information. Okay. Cool. Yeah, you're right. All right. So, book, blog, actually, Maria was saying. What yes. is the topic of, of your blog, or what topics do you... Where can you find it? I'm sorry. You're talking. That's all right. I'm sorry? Where can you find your blog? What's the uh, web address? Uh, my address, I just... Give me, yeah. Ar ArthurJGray.com, and it's G-R-A-Y. ArthurJGray.com. Uh, and the things okay. you discuss on the blog, the things you write on? Well, in my, because I'm a life coach, I try to give people uh, uh, you know, tips for success and how to really build their life, how to work, walk through different issues. It's, mm -hmm. it's interesting how you know uh, we walk through different things, and you know it was, we've all heard insanity is defined as doing the same thing over and over again, expecting the same results. And right. Many times we're just so caught up into the things of life, the business of life, that we don't take time to be able to stop, step, step back and do things. Right. One of the things I say about myself is I don't always self-assess very well, mm -hmm. so I have to take take time to just step back and just kind of examine the things I'm going through in life and right. things of that nature. And that happens to a lot of people. So it's good to have someone who can come with an objective eye mm -hmm. to give you just some thoughts and some tools to be able to walk through different issues and different relationships that you're walking through in life. And so from, uh, you know, marital relationships to kids mm -hmm. to relatives, you know, um, you know, relatives are, you know, are, well, relatives, that's a whole other story right there. <laughs> relatives. Yeah, I went through a tough one with that when I first got married. The biggest issue in our, our marriage was family, oh boy. because um, I did not um, leave and cleave quite, and uh, you know I was somewhat of a mama's boy. But I mean that happens also when you meet your wife at at 19 years old and you're married by I was somewhere between before no after my 21st birthday. Oh wow, see, same thing. I, I met my wife at 19. Mm -hmm. We were married at 22. Mm -hmm. We've been married for 31 years. Uh, 17 this year. 
right, man. Not gonna, yeah, right. that's right. That's right. So it was rough because I hadn't, I never even, I hadn't even lived on my own yet. And so that whole process of becoming a man on the job and becoming a husband and father and all that on the job, mm-hmm. man, that was rough. Well, it's very tough. And for me, I grew up in a, in a broken home, mm-hmm. uh, raised by my mom and three sisters. And so there was, there was always this notion of someone trying to, to come in and be the man, the father figure, and things like that. And that whole notion, of, and that's a part of it because we walk through things in life mm-hmm. that we, we just kind of stuff a way in the back resources of our mind and we don't realize how much of an effect it has on us in the day in our day-to-day lives even today right. um you know uh, i've been a, i'm a life coach i've been a pastor i've been an attorney and i've been an economist so i've gone through a number of things and so i've, I've walked through people a lot of things and, it, and when you start examining the especially with marital, marital relation things, mm-hmm. the, the way people, the problems people have in their lives today stem from things that they've gone through and experienced in their past that they didn't ever take time to basically address right. and deal with. Right. And even if it was trauma, if it was just someone leaving, if it was a, mm-hmm. a broken home, as in my case, there's just all these things that just linger and affect how we enter into our relationships today. And unless you're able to address those things, they keep happening over and over again. Right, right. So that's those are one of the, some of the things I write about. Um, uh, so I have my blog. I have um, uh, 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 do coaching for success and mm-hmm. things like that. And I'm about to do some additions to my website for seminars and teachings and trainings and things like that. I'll be doing as well okay. uh, in those different areas and in, in, uh, inspirational or mo- what I call motivational uh, speaking. So it's motivational and inspirational. You know, I'm, so in my past, you can't get away from preaching a little bit when you talk to folks. So what's the difference for anybody who might not be clear between motivational speaking and inspirational speaking? Well, motivational really just takes time to really encourage people to get out there and do things. You can, and, but an inspiration really goes into the heart of, of really encouraging people from a spiritual perspective, whether you're no. quoting scripture or not. But it's really, how do how, you know, in, you know, Motivation challenging, inspiration propels you, is the way I put it. Okay. Um, But the way I look at it, um, you know, information does not necessarily lead to transformation. Right. If you have teenage kids, you know what I'm talking about. Yes. You know, if you have teenage kids, (laughs) correct information does not lead to transformation. It takes revelation. Uh, and get a sense of that. Hey, wait a minute! I need to do something different in my life. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know, if you have, I, mean, I have kids that are adults, and so they many times will come and say to me, "Hey, Dad, guess what I realized? And I've learned this." And they're just kind of rehashing something I may have told them ten years ago. Thank you, Shaka. Thank you, Shaka. Ten years ago, but they needed to learn it and discover it for themselves. Um, I have a question. I see a couple of new faces that have entered. Yay, Kyle and. Um your friend. <laughs> Rebecca. Hi. Rebecca. I have a question for you. Kim, yes, go ahead. Okay. Anyway, going back to the conversation you were talking about leaving and cleaving. Uh, I, leaving, is oh. a, leaving what? Leaving what? Leaving and cleaving. You oh, know, that was something that, yeah, Shaka said, but yeah, we both agreed on that, right? Uh, one of the things that I have come up against a lot is, I don't like to say the term, but it's true, mama's voice. <laughs> and it seems like they keep coming at me, and I don't want to deal with the mama trauma. So, <laughs> in, in relationships, how do you inspire the men who are mama's boys to get past that mama's boys mentality? Well, you, first of all, you have to realize that you you know you you attract what you are, and if you have a mm. if you have a maternal instinct towards mm. men. Men are drawn towards that, and sometimes mm-hmm. you, you want to come and you give the warm fuzzies, and you care about them, and you you just have you that nurture, that nurturing sense about you. Want to know what they with, had for lunch, yes, or what, did they eat right? Yeah, did you put on your galoshes? You have clean underwear, <laughs> <laughs> and so you 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 are what you attract. But if you so if you if you're trying to kind of break off from that, then you have to make a conscious decision about the kind of conversation you might have with men and things like that. Mm. Um, and the second point of what you asked, I'm sorry, I lost it. That you said yes. How sorry. do you help me and get past that mentality of men or you? Men, men. men. He men. just he just spoke to me. Now, how does he deal with the men who yeah. have that mentality? Well, I'm gonna tell you like my aunt Curly told me one time. My aunt Vicky said, "You can't change them. You can't raise them." Okay, man, Vicky told me that back years ago. Folks are from Texas. But uh, she said, you can't raise them. But really what it comes down to is um, letting them know what you need in a relationship. 
I, I, I can't afford to be your mom. You already got a mom. This is what I need in my relationship with you. And if they want the full package of who you are and your wonderful gift to whoever they would be, you're, you're, you are the, you, if, if you're the, what is special, as, if you're as special to them as, if they realize how special you are, they will begin to say, you know what, I need to make some changes to keep this person in my life. If they're not willing to make those changes, hey, learn it quick, learn it fast, and let, it, you know, let them be on their way. Okay? Hey, Art, do you think that, um, do you believe in marriage? Do you think marriage, true, long term, Marriages work. Well, that's one thing Shaka and I were just talking about. He's oh, been, you he's, did talk about that. He's been well, just in terms of length. He's been married oh. for seventeen years. He got married at nineteen or twenty-one. Mm -hmm. I got married at twenty-two. Been married for thirty-one years. Oh wow, the odds were against both of you, and look at you. Well, I, well, yeah. First of all, I was. You were twenty, twenty-one. You, you were young. Came from a broken home. Came from the urban community. Mm -hmm. um, um, our 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 oldest son, who's now thirty-two, and you do the math. We've been married thirty-one. He's thirty-two. <laughs> Actually, no. He's he'll be thirty. <laughs> he'll, wait a minute. He'll be thirty-two the the eleventh of November. So, and then we'll be thirty-two years in in June. Wow. So he was married before we. He was born before we were married. So we we went through all the kind of stuff oh, like that. Okay, okay. Broken home, really young. You know, first pregnancy out of wedlock and things like that. And so we do believe in long-term marriage. That's one of the things we do. We do premarital and and, and ongoing marital counseling and things like that. But it is something that I really believe that there is that there is a place for the long term relationships. Oh, if you know what it takes to get to that long term place. Um, right, but but yes, Stephen. Um, I just I just think because we're living longer, it's harder to have one relationship throughout your whole life. I mean, back in the day, you know, you your life expectancy was like 40, 50 years old, so. It made sense you were married only once to one person for a long time, but now we're living to like 80, 90. I mean, can you have more than one right person, the I, one? Well, you know, that notion of the right person, I or think. The, the one. The one. I think the, what, the makes, what I makes the one the one is how the two come together to be one. Mm -hmm. And so it can be, well, and it happens with you know, people, you know. So there are more than ones. Oh, yes. I mean, yeah, 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 I, I believe there are because well, a person I, can pass away or things like that. Well, just, uh, a point on that, um, uh, the, the fact of being the one, I mean, if you, if, you, if you think there's such a thing as the one, then you're not currently with him. That's, that, that's, that's how the odds work. I mean, there's, there's the chances of you having met your perfect match out of everybody on the planet is as good as impossible. So right. there's, there's, if there is such a thing as the one, then you've got to sort of be comfortable with the fact that you're not with your best match. There's yeah. someone out there that you'd be I, happy with. <laughs> That's, yeah, um. I agree with you. I think that you have more than one. It's to, the togetherness makes it the one. So you can't you yeah. can't say I've met the perfect match. Yeah. You're right because there are many. Just up to you. Right. And right. It, like, like there are a few. I'm not saying there's a lot, but there are there's thousands. There's, there's thousands, literally tens of thousands. Because because it's not just a matter of meeting somebody that's a perfect match. It's a bad dude, man. It's a matter of things. But it's it's not it's not just, like like I say. It's a matter of two making the one, and I and I believe in that because it's it's right. it's a matter of shared experiences and things like that as well. And certain shared experiences are all due to chance a lot of the time, and it, it just. Someone might look at you in a certain way and give you a certain smile that you catch on to. But if you weren't looking that way at that particular moment, you wouldn't have caught that. And you know, I mean, there's loads of different variables. Can I, just, can I share your story a little bit, Trev, with Art? Is it okay? Of course. Okay. Yeah. We've talked to Trev before in the past, and he is resident. I think he's hesitant to, and I hope I have this right, hesitant to enter a serious long-term relationship, i.e. marriage, because he's had his heart broken a couple of times. I, well, that's not the reason why I don't want to well, get married. I don't want to get married. I, I, I don't want to get into a long-term relationship, but marriage is, a, marriage. marriage is a completely different issue altogether. Okay, I just so don't see marriage. the point so I was right about yeah. the first part. Right. Okay, so long-term okay. long relationship, because he's had his heart broken a couple of times. Yeah. I mean, I... Yeah, yeah, pretty much. It's it's not so much a long term relationship. It's just I'm am scared of um, I'm scared of that level of attachment of of being so bound to somebody. Is that, that good or bad for, for for us humans? Like, is that a good thing to not go after because you've had your heart broken? Well, I think we were created to walk in a relationship with other people, um, and what that relationship looks like varies from person to person. Mm. Um, you know, any relationship that you enter into, especially, you know, when, you, when you get, I, I like to analogize marriage to a car. 
Um, when you when you marry so, you marry somebody. So did R. Kelly? No, I'm just kidding. R. <laughs> Kelly compared it to his Jeep, but that's okay. <laughs> when you when you marry someone, it's not or come into a relationship with someone, it's not like getting a, a beautiful cherried out car. It's a like getting a broken down bucket of bolts that both of you have to work on to cherry it out. It's not like buying a brand new, you know, Porsche or something like that. You're going to get some old car that you've got to work on, polish up, sand up, and all those kind of things like that. And unless both people are, are willing to work on it, you know, someone's going to get hurt, and it won't it won't develop into a full relationship. So for like for yourself example, yourself as an example, I mean, I can understand that. I mean, I, I, I you know, no one can say, hey, you need to because of, you just have to. Well, it's your choice, bro. Yeah, but the issue is, at some point in time, will there be that certain person that all of a sudden sparks your interest and says, yeah, this yeah. person I, I really want to be with. And it's not a question of do I want to be with them forever. I want to be with them today. And then today turns into tomorrow and next week and next month. And before you know it, the years and years come. So it's it's a question of walking through relationships time you know, day by day and then working on how you build that relationship to be something better, something that's more enjoyable for each of you. And that takes communication, communicating what's important to you and that person communicating what's important to them. And before you know it, you have something, you look behind and all of a sudden you've been together for X many like, years. I like that. I like to wake up and I would like to put it in that way. Is like, I want to be with this person today. But, but that's the, I, I, I completely agree with what you just said entirely. Um, the, the, the relationship should be, this is why I don't think divorce is such a bad thing, because if, well, unless it is a bad thing, you know what I mean? But it's, it's, there, are, there are times when people grow apart, and like I say, a relationship could be brilliant for somebody now, but in 10 years, if it's not working out, then you don't stay together for the sake of just because you're married. If you're not getting on, then separate. That's, that's you know, it's, and I think that, um, as Maria said um, before, we're living longer now, and as a result of that, the chances of you growing apart are, getting so much greater that getting married just doesn't seem viable to me because it's going to cost you down the line, <laughs> you know, and it's, One well, I, hmm. is that the case in America though, where, where if you are married, you get tax breaks? Is that still yeah. how it is? Oh, okay, well, in that in that respect, then there is a point to doing it, but if, <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously, it's basically a business contract, isn't it? Oh, my goodness. I, I hear you. Yeah, but what's the point? I don't need to sign a thing to say I love somebody. I, if, I, if I love somebody, I'm devoted to them. Then no certificate is going to make that even more great. It's just, I, I mean, there are other reasons why people legally get married, obviously for children. Um, there are why children though? beyond, huh? Why children? What, what, what do you mean in that regard? Well, laws are such that, I mean, you want to make sure that you have a say in how you raise your child. And if you're not, you have to be married for that. No, you don't have to be. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's easier if you are, though, married, yeah. regarding the laws, especially here in California. But marriage, you know, the, the, excuse me, we're cutting no, you no, off. No, 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 you're not. But, you know, uh, you know, almost it comes down to a choice. Because of my background, I, I having done it for 31, almost 32 years, obviously I, I'm, a, I'm a pro-marriage guy. Um, but for you, bro, um, you know, you have to find out what works best for you and how you how you're going to live your life in, in the situation. That you're in. Because if you're walking, if you're in a, involved in a relationship, and all of a sudden things get really bad after ten years and you're married, I've had pe I've had people that I've sat with and counseled, and while things are really difficult, they just made a few minor adjustments. They said, "Oh, this is where we're just not clicking and ticking." And sometimes mm -hmm. that's what it, that's all it takes is just kind of coming to a realization about certain things and learning how to walk together. But it comes down to whether or not you're going to make a commitment to a person, a commitment to a relationship, and each person's different how they walk through that, and each person's different how they handle that. Um, and so it, it, you know, I think you know you, you can't say no, we shouldn't, or no, yes, we should. Um, but by the same token, and, and you and you can't vilify or make a person feel like there's something wrong with them because they have uh, you know been married for X number of years, or because they have they've been married multiple times. Um, it's, it's 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 up to you and what you feel best. Um, but it's a question. Well, any relationship that you have should be as healthy a relationship as possible. And sometimes people need help getting there. Yeah, I think I think I think we make it. I mean, again. Um, Super point. That's it. I agree with you entirely. I think in my case, it's it's the fact that I'm I'm content as I am. That that's why I'm not seeking anything more than what I've got at the moment. So that's that might be. I mean, if it like you say, if I eventually do meet somebody, maybe that will change my mind. But at the moment, I'm I'm bang on. And if anything anything else could 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 knock it where I am at the moment, I don't want that to happen. So, yeah. Stephen, did you have a question? I'm sorry. Well, um, yeah, I think uh, um, Art's kind of answered the question that I was going to ask. I was going to ask you what the most common 
problems you would see as a as a as a life coach would be. But I, I think they're probably relationship problems, aren't they? Well, relationship problems, and also, um, it, it, well, they manifest themselves in relationships because relationships are we're always interacting and engaging with people, so it comes out in relationships. Mm -hmm. um, but it could be anything from uh, low self-esteem to anger issues to um, you know uncertainty. You know, you know, just walking through the same thing. And typically, most of them flow from from people having these these low self-esteem, these uncertainty issues, these anger issues that just come out in relationships, whether it's in work, whether it's with a loved one, whether it's with a family member, because we engage with people. So they they, they come out in relationships, but they stem from different things. Um. Art will often comment on our political candidates and the political climate and our mm -hmm. elect, you know, days leading up to the election. But um, I think Tony and I were talking yesterday about Tony. Were you the one that mentioned how uh, some study that the issue of racism? I hate to you know bring that up, but that's not really my point. Is that with the president, because we have a black president, that that's actually um, increased. The number. What was the study, Tony? Is increased the number of that between 2008 and 2012. Come, Tony. Mm -hmm. Between 2008 and 2012, <clears throat> the negative uh, attitudes about black people had actually increased from 48 percent to 51. Wow, you know all those numbers in your head just like that. You, heard that, yeah. you did yeah. hear that yesterday. Yeah. 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 The survey. Right. Um, what What are your thoughts on that? Are you surprised are by you, that? Yeah, I'm are just you? curious. Um, I, I'm not surprised at the study, and I'm not surprised surprised people may have those perspectives. Um, I, I don't believe that there's a reason why the people should have more negative. I don't, and could it be economic? Uh, yeah, we talked about yeah. that yesterday. Is it just coincidence that it's happening when we have a black president? But could it be because of the state of our economy and so many people because without we see those jobs? Things and, when yeah. the economy tanks. Well, exactly. That's the point. When, when when things go bad, people look for someone to blame. And, 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 and that's, some, that's the key. People and, are looking for someone to blame. Who's responsible for the things I'm going through right now? And, you know, with the immigration issues we have here in the United States, people look to people who are, who are undocumented, uh, undocumented people who are living here now, and they blame them on the, on, you know, the, on, on the, for, for, the, for the problems they're facing. So a lot of times people look, to, when it comes down to jobs, it comes down to money, they look for someone to say, this person is responsible for what I'm facing, these things are responsible for what I'm dealing with. And then sometimes we have the media that portrays people in, in very negative lights and things like that. And so that can, that can affect how the perception of how the people have. Of, of different people groups, um, you know, having worked with a lot of different people and been involved in different settings and things like that, you know, uh, with, with a lot of a broad range of people, I don't think that the people that I engage with look at black people any worse than you know over the past years than they did before. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, just that's just my own particular yeah. experience, and um, you know, I heard that study yesterday when they were sharing it. It, it, it bugged me. I'm still processing through that. It takes me oh, I can I can tell. Yeah, me too. yeah, we were talking about yeah, it. Tony and I were still working through that. I got issues with that. Yeah, it, it's disappointing. That's the that's the main thing. You know, um, you'd have thought with a black presidency would have brought people closer together, but uh, either way, it is disappointing. But, but I don't think personally. I don't think they're. I think they're not related. I think it has to do more with the state of our economy. I think it's I think it's the fact that, 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 that it's, it's it's because because it's black. It's it's just because it's something. I mean, if it, if it was if it wasn't because it was black, if it was something else, it, it, it's just because the, the people on the opposite side are thinking it's Obama's fault. What is Obama is black. Well, therefore it's black. People. I don't know. It's just maybe something like that. I don't, it's because because now it's it's political. Um, so you basically got two halves of the country. Whereas before, if you didn't have a black president, it wasn't political. So it's not dividing it in half. It's just dividing it in racists and non-racists. Mm -hmm. there, there, there's an article. <laughs> there's an article. I think it's today, maybe yesterday, in the New York Times by Thomas Friedman. Some of you may have heard of him. Um, and it's a very interesting thing in that. And I'll make this as short as possible. Obviously, you should go read the article. But he gives a sense of hope. And the comments, by the way, are also intelligent and agree with this. Uh, you know, as an expatriate, I've been watching this situation, and it's very saddening. Uh, regardless of the cause, I think it's a subject that's brought up more for that reason because of the visibility. But anyway, the Thomas Friedman article states clearly he went back home. He lived in a small suburb of Minneapolis, Minnesota. And in fact, it's where I was born as well. And he went back and noticed that in the year that he went to high school, 
which was in the 70s, uh, mm -hmm. there were two African Americans in the high school. And at the moment, there are um, a large percentage, first of all, a lot of Somalis have uh, moved in. The point being anyway, that uh, the whole neighborhood, which was mostly Catholic, Jewish, and so on, is now very much integrated. And as a result, what he found was that attitudes have uh, changed uh, really amazingly. And, and the, the hope he gives is a hope that I almost have lost watching the situation currently. So the point being that things will get more progressive and more liberal in the best sense of that word, not in the politics thing, but the fact of accepting yeah. other people. Because, hey, look at the Hispanic situation. I mean, I don't know these percentages, but look at the rise of it. So, you know, we're going to have to get used to the fact that your neighbor may not come from the same place as you. He may not be, he or she may not be the same color. They may not have the same sexual orientation. We have to get this thing together because there's only one planet. You can only move so far. That's a, that's a huge point, what you're saying. And it, it, for, from my perspective as, as a pastor and the things I deal with, one of the things I deal with is urban, what people call urban ministries, because the um, United States, think of missionaries. People always think about the United States sending missionaries to other parts of the world. Well, the United States is not only the number one sender of missionaries, it is now the number one receiver of missionaries in the world. Which means, yes, which means there are more people coming from other countries to minister to people in different parts of the United States, typically their own race and their own people from their own uh, background. So, like, say, for example, in, um, in I think it's Dallas, that Dallas has the, 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 the second largest concentration of Nigerians, second only to Lagos, Nigeria. Uh, Los Angeles has the second largest concentration of people of Mexican descent, second to Mexico City. We have the same with the Vietnamese. The and, Vietnamese, and, it's, it's amazing that we have become, we have really become this melting pot. The, the largest Christian church is not in the United States, it's in Korea. The mm -hmm. largest, the largest Muslim temple is not in the Middle East, it's in Dearborn, Michigan. And so we have this huge dynamic of all the things and changes that are happening here in the United mm -hmm. States. Uh, the, the, um, uh, uh, the, the Pacific Northwest is, an, is, is another example of that. See, you're making a huge point. That's why America has become uh, so, such, such a plurality of people over the, over the years. And that's why we have so many different, uh, different people and different backgrounds and things like that. Because the people who live next door to you, they may connect more with people around the world and they connect with people next door to you because of the Internet and because of their, their, their own um, uh, uh, nationality. So those are huge dynamics. That's a great point that you're making. I like the hope aspect yeah. of that. I'd like to, to look at that article, Randy. Thank you. Yeah. Um, all right, you guys. Well, I think, Art, you have to be somewhere at 10, right? So yes. um, anyway, thanks for stopping by today. It's always wonderful being here. Thanks, guys, for having me here. Thanks. Well, I like thanks. Alex. That's why not. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, Art's always here on Wednesdays. Yes. So, I'd love to have you come in and talk with yeah. us. So, um, depending on your schedule and everything, um, love to have you back. I would love to be back. Okay. So it's a much, uh, a much easier conversation than the one we have with Larry, isn't it? That's, uh... <laughs> I was thinking the same thing. Yeah. I was thinking the same <laughs> thing. We talk to Larry on Tuesdays. Oh. And I really often will leave that hangout feeling a bit deflated. Yes. Don't feel fired up. I love it. I love chatting to Larry. It's I awesome. Know. No, I, I love it too, but what I'm talking about is, I guess, my hope is not as high as, mm. for some reason, right. I just, I feel a little bit, more, it's more of a downer for me. Well, um, I understand, yeah. And um, I just, I, I, I get so sad when I think about our society and yeah. the way that, anyway. Well, well like we used to say back in the 70s, peace, power, war. <laughs> 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 Take care. I, I, I inserted the uh, article I was speaking of, which is a w worthy read in the chat. Okay, thank you, Randy. So take a look at that. Awesome, thank you. I will. Friedman, huh? Friedman, Maria. Yeah, do you want to come join me? Um, is there a yeah. what? Friedman quote that I like? Look, no. Oh, Tony's computer keeps dying. Do you want to look at my thing here? No, I, I think it's a user error. There must be a user error. Well, I tried it. Good morning, Tony. I'm sorry. Hi. Yeah, Tony I'm back that. in the house. Hey, <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about, Tony. Here, let me open up this, and then you can read it from here. I can't. No. What? Why not? You're holding a hangout. I can't be reading my script while you're holding a hangout. Sure can. 
Sure you can. Why not? I'm a multitasker. Look, here's what I'll do. Look, look at this. This is so easy. I'm going to make this box really small so we can still um, spend some time with everybody. And then here, look at this, Tony. Look at that. I can't do that. Look. look, there you are. That's Tony, where are your glasses? Look at that, Tony. They're look. Right here. And look there, and everyone's still here. Those are different from yesterday. They are not, Kim. Yes, no, they are. No, they're, no, no, no. Those no. Are okay, Anthony, this is an A and B conversation. Between oh, 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 I'm just giving you a hard time because they gave you a hard time yesterday hiding behind your glasses. Yeah, 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 Anthony, you should, you, you should see your way out of it for for me to eat you up, bro. Why do you do that? Oh. Tony, look, you can read all your, this is what, you will actually get a behind the scenes look at what Tony does in front of his desk. So this will be Tony reading all his scripts getting ready for the 10 o'clock news. <laughs> is that for me, Chiggy? Yes. My battery here. Right here, right here, Chiggy. Oh. Okay, she's cracking me up, sticking her butt up. <laughs> um, I, I, I had to go there on Anthony because I, 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 I knew he would have no idea about that little saying. <laughs> oh, with, with Anthony? I use that one all the time. <laughs> Just single me out, huh? I see how it's going to oh, be. Because, because, because you're the young one in the bunch, and I knew you would have no idea that that was coming. Mm -hmm. I, I knew you you had no idea that that was coming. <laughs> hey, Maria, so, that, that um, Art was a very nice guy, really. Isn't uh, he the nicest guy ever? He's mm -hmm. Not that Larry's not nice, but I just what I mean is that his outlook on... Society is just completely different. Well, he's different. a pastor for one he's thing. He's a minister. Yeah, so he's he has a pastor. A completely different he's a life coach. demeanor, and uh, he's not a um, a talk <laughs> show host that riles uh, gets your ire going. I think he's more it, it, he's more relaxing, whereas Larry is more stir up and calls havoc and abrasive. And, Let's not forget yeah. abrasive. abrasive. He's a little okay, more abrasive. abrasive. I mean, yes. I mean, Larry's a cool guy when you can just talk to him about anything else. <laughs> anything. I think I know what, what you, you mean, Maria. Like, it's, I mean, I, I like talking to Larry, but, uh, like, uh, like now I feel chilled out. Uh, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? But, but yeah, after that's talking different. to Larry. That's what yeah. I mean. That's the, that's the lasting effect that I'm talking about. It sets about a different tone for the hangout, I feel. It's yeah. a different, um, yeah, with Larry, when it's over, I feel... Oh, I don't feel deflated. I feel, I feel more, more angered and more, more fired up, if you know what I mean. So it's... So it, both both are highs, but one of them is a is a chilled out one. The other one is a. Mine is definitely not a high. Oh, really? Yeah, it's different. It's different. It's not a high. Well, not the kind that I like to have every day. Right. Yeah. I don't think I've uh, met Larry. Um, I'm not sure well, now. you need to meet Larry, Stephen. He's here on Tuesdays typically, and um, he has some very strong opinions about. Yeah, there's no such thing as saying I, I don't think I've met him. You either know it or you don't. That's the thing. Yeah, if you don't, exactly. if you don't know it, then you if you don't know, then you, <laughs> know. you damn sure know it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, he will get your ire going. Well, that's all of our guests for today, you guys. So, if you have a question for me and Tony, go ahead. Nobody has any questions. For um, <laughs> what did you do for your here. birthday, Maria? What did I do? Tony, why are you so nice? Oh, I should show you. <laughs> Let me, let me show you. We should. That is an excellent idea. We should do this. <laughs> uh, let me see if it's here. Director Francis wants to know why am I such a nice guy? Why is Tony such a nice guy? What? Why is that, Tony? You're one of the nicest because guys. Because Tony's big and strong. He doesn't have to be mean. It's like That's it's true. like it's physical That's intimidation. True. It's like just look at him. He doesn't he, he he doesn't need to be anything but nice. It's really it's really kind of weird to, for something I, I, politely comes out no, as a not true. Tony Mac. Tony grew up in a tough neighborhood. He he should have been a jackhole. He should have been a mean guy. But you're not. Why are no, you so no, nice? No. Huh? He doesn't have to be because if someone pisses him off, he can just reach over and crush their heads or something. Which, which, well, which I know, which is what he's going to do. He's standing here taunting me, clearly taking his life in his own Not hands. Not a good idea, <laughs> In fact, you know what? I could have killed him many times over. That's Eloy. He was, 
he was standing in the kitchen here at the station a few minutes ago. He was I was standing right behind him Eloy for is, five uh, minutes and he didn't know I was there. I told him I could have cut his throat. Eloy's brave. <laughs> Tony, uh, you're kind of vicious this morning. Is there a problem we need to be aware of? It's Halloween, Kim. Everybody okay, I mean, you call. were kind of, you kind of went off on Anthony, and I'm, I'm kind of scared to talk to you now. You know, I went off, you know why? You know why? You know why I went off on Anthony? Because this is, because it's fun to go off on. This Anthony. is actually um Tony most of the time. Yeah, just ask Melissa. She always catches, she always catches me off guard, like it's every really, almost it's every day. Fun to go off on Anthony because then he gets all you know he gets all flustered and then he like strikes out like you know someone young does you know just in you're lucky you're you're lucky you're safe there in Los Angeles. He just starts firing missiles everywhere. Can you hear that? Yeah, as always. It would be good if I was president because half the world would be gone by now. But but I go off on Trev too. Diano, I don't mess with too much because Diano always has my back. Of course. Hey, what the Tony, what? <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. Whenever there's a... I, where are they? Oh, man, I'm hurt. Oh, you made Trev speechless. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, 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 I was the confused. So. I, I, I don't know really what Trev ever be that close to before. Like, no, no. I, I know. Like, well, Trev, are you okay? I like oh, I'm speechless? I like it's like just random trail. words were coming out. No, no. <laughs> Let me tell you. Tony, I, I like I like going I like going off on Trev because because then he 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 then he just really gets all you know he, he fired up hyper yeah, and then yeah, and then that yeah, accent gets yeah. so thick you can't understand a word he's saying. <laughs> You're like one of the nicest guys, um, Trev. I know, all I know, of you know, are. Yeah, but you guys know you guys do. Um, you guys know I love all of you in the hangout, right? I mean, you guys know. That. Oh no no no, just, like, no yeah, we don't. No, oh, Kim, don't even we'll try see, it. Well, see, if you didn't, if you didn't like us, you wouldn't, you wouldn't treat us like that. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> we only pick with the ones we love. <laughs> of course. Hey, Robin. Why do you keep moving the camera, Tony? I'm. Oh, I know what you're doing. Oh, I see what you're doing. You're trying to read the scripts. I got it. You're the one who wanted me over here reading my scripts. Go ahead. Go ahead. I want you over here. Oh, so, oh, you're reading your scripts here. Read them. She wants. She does it. Like, I, I love I Tony. I always want Tony nearby. She gave me a tangerine today, which I, you know I was very thankful for, actually. A a actually, it's like that—that's very true. It's like I mean, t Tony, while, while while you were gone, Maria, Maria mentioned at least once every seven minutes or so how, how much she wanted you here, and she was disappointed oh, really? that you weren't here. Really? That, that is a true statement. Really? That's so true. Quite often. <laughs> I'm and really you know why she did here. that, though? It makes me tear up. Do you know why she did that? <laughs> I, Francis, you're laughing, but it's true. It does. It makes me tear up. Okay, Francis, thank you very much. <laughs> it's true. I need to hear, bud. You know why she? You no. know why she did that? Because because Maria realizes how traumatized I was no. the last time I held a hangout <laughs> and nobody showed up. <laughs> <laughs> I, I do get teared up. But at least you're without your friends. Tony, exactly how long do you plan on bringing this up? Jesus, dude. Oh, no, listen. I want you guys to know you will never, ever live this down. I have a memory like an elephant. Do you hear me? I do tear up when Tony's That's exactly not here. what I figured your answer would be. <laughs> Come on. You got oh, listen. Now Eloy's crying. Oh, good Lord. <laughs> You, oh, you guys, what you, was, come on now. I'm from the south side of Chicago. I grab hold of things and I hold on to them forever. Okay? Oh, yeah, they are. Oh, people from Chicago are definitely like no, that. Yeah. Oh, gosh. my best One of my best friends is he from is, Chicago. He will forever be traumatized by no one showing up in his hangout until the day he dies. Well, if, if Trev, Trev thinks he's sensitive and he's easily hurt, and you know what? And here's the funny thing. Because Trev didn't even show up that day. And here's the thing. He did. He did. Yeah. He did. You didn't even come one day. No. No. Like the, 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 there were two days where I didn't. One of them yeah. was Maria's. Well, they were the two times day. I was hosting their hangout. Well, no, it, was, it wasn't that. It was one, one, one of them was for a total of three days, I think. It was like three yes, days. Three days. Or something three like days. That. Well, I think I was so traumatized. I, I, I wasn't it. there once. And I told you the reason I wasn't there is because I never got the invite. <laughs> right. Like, that's a real excuse, but that's okay. I won't go there. But you all know when we have the hangouts here every day. Yeah. Like, you know, like I he doesn't know that. And, right? it, so, and it wasn't open yet. Oh, <laughs> oh you know, that the, is true. The, it was 8.30 and you hadn't had it open yet. 
And oh, then you I know what? I've, been, like, I've, I've been sitting here. I've been so sitting here this entire time. Stephen, I don't think I know you. You know Stephen? No, we haven't met Tony. Uh, no, no, <laughs> no. I don't. Stephen, how are you? Hi, Stephen, where are, you? where are you? The Stephen? orange got in my throat. Uh, I'm in mean, the northeast of England, up in uh, New York. In oh. Oh, another one of those, huh? Oh, yeah. Talk about you, man. Another Brit. Um, another Northern, actually. Yeah, we're not so far from each other. But he doesn't have the same accent as you. No, you know, all three of you, in fact, all four of you, Ayub, uh, Justin. Justin, Trev, and Stephen, you all sound distinctly different. It's, well, I'm actually impressed that you noticed that, though, because a lot of the time with um, with Americans, we all sound this, we all sound equally Oh no. Oh no. no. Pick up the difference. In Malta. Totally right, Stephen? Weren't you born in Malta? Yeah, but I don't have a, I don't really have a northern accent. I don't have an accent at all because, um, because you know, my father was in the army. That's Excuse why me, Stephen. What, what do you mean you, do you don't have, have an, an accent? You do have an you accent. Have an accent. <laughs> It's you know just mixed in with a little bit of other well, things. Besides I, I, I don't, but, but it's funny. It's funny like I don't have an accent at all. But it's funny you should say that, Stephen, because you know what? I <laughs> when I went to Australia, <laughs> when I went to Australia, and I kept telling them about their accents, they were like, "We don't have an accent. You have an accent." <laughs> I think that, that's the thing with, with them. You have the Stephen, accent. Though. With Stevens, you can't quite place it. It's more like a neutral accent. Um, I think that's what he means, as opposed to like, like I, I mean, I've got Yorkshire accent specifically. Right, right. Yeah. But, but I hear it, Stephen. I hear the accent. I, I do hear it, though. I do hear that little bit of, yeah, I can tell. In other words, if you had done more talking, I would have guessed you were in the UK. Right. Well, it's probably because. Definitely, yeah, you would have. It's because obviously as a youngster I moved around a lot and I didn't go to school in this area either. I went to um, I went to a boarding school, so um, everybody at my school tended to adopt the same non-dialect accent. So mm -hmm. you know we don't sort of sound like we come from anywhere, in particular in the UK. But obviously as an American, you would say yes, you have a, an English accent. Um, Anthony Ramos has a huge watermark on his screen. How do you do that? I, I prefer that. I prefer that to the to the normal lower third. I think it looks really good. The, really? But that's like yeah. such a... Billy Stanley made it. Who? He's in Michelle Lee's hangout. Oh, Michelle's hangout. Okay. Mm -hmm. It just it seems obnoxious, but not. Um, <laughs> I think it's less so. Because hey, but not. see, it goes with my personality. Obnoxious, but transparent. Not. Obnoxious, but not in a little transparent, Anthony. Mm -hmm. What's like Anthony? It's like, I mean, if, if, if I were making one for me, it's like I would want it to be perhaps a little bit smaller because it, it does seem to take up a lot of room. It does. It's a little obnoxious. But, but yeah, but you can see through it. I mean, it's it's, it's like it, with the other ones, you can't see through it. <laughs> well, yeah, like, I, I do like the transparency. I, that's the only thing that making it a little bit bigger makes it kind of okay. Mm. Yeah, that's the only, you're right, the transparency at least. I like the transparency. Um, yeah, it's kind of cool. I think it's cool, yeah. At least yeah. you get noticed, Anthony. You get noticed with one of those. It does. You do notice it. Yeah. Well, it I, I, I prefer it. I, I, mean, I, yeah, I really like that. Well, you should do that one, Trev. I don't feel important enough to have my name I in the box. I know. I know. <laughs> I know. For, for you, that throws you over the well, edge. Well, and Trev's yeah. shot is a lot tighter. I mean, I guess you could pull out. But, I mean, his, I mean, look at Anthony. You can see much more of well, Anthony. Because Trev is just a little closer to the camera. Can... Well, if I sit back, I've got... Um... Yeah, well, I guess you could sit back. Yeah. But, but, but I like the up-close and personal thing, Trev. I mean, I feel like I'm actually communing and connecting with you. Communing? <laughs> well, I'm not really. This is, 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 is actually funny watching Trev sometimes. Like, I mean, he, you get, like, any time it's like that we have a guest with a Latina accent, it's like, <laughs> I'll, I'll be watching Trev. Trev like, oh, because no, no, it's at that point, Trev will be through our screen. Trev will be like, yeah, exactly. Whoa. And, and it's it, just so funny to watch. It's it's actually, actually, I noticed it, that. It I noticed that. I noticed that same reaction when Aroxia comes. Katie or whatever from um from Grimm, which by the way, no, I saw you remember when Kate Cas was on? It was actually no, it was pretty Kate good. Del Castillo, yeah, it was yeah. Kate Del Castillo. Yeah, and I actually saw that episode of Grimm, and it was pretty good. But when she was it here, it's like I, I was watching Trip for most of the time. He didn't blink for like three minutes straight. It was hilarious. <laughs> yeah, why do you guys pick on Trev so much? That's, that's, that's the truth. I mean. I, it, 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 <laughs> That accent, that accent just drives me mental. I, I, I honestly. Mental. He said mental. mental. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, mental. Then at the end of that interview, when she actually started talking in Spanish, I immediately looked at Trev. Trev, <laughs> absolutely priceless. I, I wish I'd have grabbed a screenshot of it. It was awesome. <laughs>
Matt, Matt, that computer is broken again. Oh. Tony's computer. Sorry, guys. Use an error. That's Matt. He's our computer guy. <coughs> Look at Tony. Look at Tony. He's serious. He's, he's mad. He is super serial right, right now. Why is that man? <laughs> hey, don't make me get out this chair. You see, know what? see how it turns out? You want me to get up? You want me to get up? Get, get ticked off. I can't with Matt because I like that a lot. I really like that a lot. Tony is like one of those like he's like one of those watchdogs, a pit bull, and then you go into the house and he like rolls over for you so you can steal everything in the house. You know what I mean? Some some watchdog. Oh, yes, so you were gonna show me the birthday pictures. What's up? Oh right, right. Okay, hold on. Let me see. Um I really didn't do very much. It was a very relaxing day, so I don't know if you can hear this. Oh! That is so cool! Look at Gus! Oh, it's so cute! Oh, he's so cute! Yeah. <laughs> 39. Love that. <laughs> oh, look at him. Oh. That is an awesome kid. Hey, that, that, is, that is fantastic, Maria. <laughs> he's like, he's getting so big. Yeah, look at him. <laughs> <laughs> so you, do look, uh, you do look better without your face on, though. You know, your, your, your thingy mask. You definitely. Oh, did you see yeah, that? No makeup. You look better. You look better. Yeah, it's, you just, just. You look much better. It's like that HD makeup. This. Yeah. <laughs> I can't believe you're 39, Maria. Good God. Uh, you know. well, 39 again. Yeah. It's... <laughs> okay, I'm gonna show Matt how my computer does not work. So, um, Matt, okay, come here. Watch this. Yes. So I'm trying to print this, right? I file, print, I choose a printer, right? Wait, this no, this is not the printer. That's well, why. that's that. Those are the printers that yeah. I've been given here. Okay, so let's, let's go ahead and cancel this, please. Okay. Click on start. Oh my goodness. Was that XP? I just heard. Printers. Yeah, they use XP over there. Oh wow. I uh, removed I everything. took a passenger to the airport today. We kept trying to call him, and they um. We kept getting a busy signal, so when I asked him about it, she said they were checking their di they have dial up and they're checking their flight. What? Dial up? That's what I s I looked at her first and I'm like, did she say dial up? Like surely she she used the wrong <laughs> term. Nobody uses she's dial up. About Right, yeah, that that's all it was. Well, that will have been the last term she can remember from when she knew computers, like back twenty years yeah, ago. Yeah, exactly. Nobody's on dial up anymore. Well, the thing is, we kept calling her, and it was busy like for hours. Man, unless she actually was on the phone with AT and T, I think she was on dial up internet. Who was on the phone with at AT and T? Oh, because every time you call AT and T, you're on on the phone with like. Two, three, seven hours. Oh yeah, no. It's to fix that one little problem. Start. I mean, printer. Set the That's it. Close it. And then all I could do is laugh. In, you know, in my head. Print something. <laughs> Dial up. Okay. Let's say I want to print this document. Okay. Print. It automatically choose it. Yeah, because I already have that it one. as default. Okay. All right. It's printing. It's printing. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. You're good. Did you fix Tony's computer? Yeah, he's good too. No, no, we did that before, and it would it'll go back black. It will go black again. Okay. Now it's gonna work for a couple of days until I I have to re-image the whole thing. Okay. So. Thanks, Matt. Okay, so hopefully we'll I mean, we'll be fine for now. Okay. All right, Matt. Okay. That's Matt, our computer dude. Bye, Matt. Hi, Hi Matt. Bye, Matt. Hi, Matt. See ya. Hi, bye. Hi, bye. Okay. Um, Do you know, I've just clicked on a picture on Facebook, and um, are the ads at the side specific to you, or are they just to, just randomly to anybody? Because, okay, let me, do they work off your cookies, basically, I'm asking, because I've just clicked on somebody's picture and a little ad at the side, Hot Latino Girls, Amorlatina.com. What are we Still, doing? 
but there's also credit cards and things as well, as well there. So I'm thinking the Latino thing might just be a coincidence. What are we talking about? Facebook ads. Oh. There's a Facebook ad just popped up for me. I don't know whether it's cookie based or. Um... Oh, it's probably cookie based. Mm. Um, I want to shop online for one. Though. It's probably Google. Maybe they're listening to what you're saying, and you're saying Latina a lot. I do post a lot about <laughs> Latinas on Facebook. I more so than I do on um, on, on Google Plus. I actually started a, a, a hashtag on Google Plus as well. Um, uh, Latina Lunes. So it's La Latina oh. Monday. Yeah, so, um, but it, it, it was just me posting about it. <laughs> it was just me posting about it until there was another girl who came up with the same idea, so it, it, it oh. sort of took off a little bit, but it took off because of her, not because of me. Um, oh. the, just this week. Um, so I, I posted about, about on... Sorry? I didn't realize you were on Facebook. Yeah, yeah, but I, I use Facebook for <laughs> just like. <laughs> 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 I'm was sorry. That? Did I laugh out loud? That was your out loud outside. Voice. Well, the thing is, on Facebook, I'm a bit more. I'm, I'm more crude because people know me personally, so I can just say what the, whatever I want. Oh. Um, so, <laughs> so that's the thing. So it's whereas on Google Plus, it's more public. Um, so I, I, I tend to stay away from Facebook because nobody can spell and it pisses me off. You could argue that um, Facebook would probably be more public than Google Plus if you chose. Uh, yeah, but I, I just do it. I just do it to friends. Um, oh, got it. On Google Plus, I don't use it that way. I use it for just, you know. Yeah. Where did Diana go? He left. Um, oh, he's there. Listen, Come guys, on. I've got to bow out because um, the um, the kids are going to start coming around for their. Halloween. Okay, Stephen, thank you so much for uh, joining the hangout today, particularly the one with Dr. Jen Berman. You guys were so awesome. Thank you. No worries, thank you. Thank I like um, talking to her. I missed it, didn't I? You did. I really enjoyed it. You actually, I really it. enjoyed this. You hangout. did, Trev. You would have enjoyed it. Mm. I've met a couple yeah, of times. He, he, he does. Been, uh, yeah, he does enjoy yeah. that one. Um, yeah. Anyway, all right, you guys. Well, listen, we have had some um, a tremendous visits on the Wayans Brothers hangout from yesterday. Is what I was told. <laughs> <laughs> I have put that all. Up. I had one girl who just on Facebook. She was having this constant dialogue with me about it because she mm -hmm. is a big fan of the Wayans Brothers. Mm. Well, that was fun. That was really fun. You no, know I, I, I wasn't. I didn't. I didn't find them funny, any of them, um, until yesterday. <laughs> that, oh. that, yeah, you that, know, I wasn't a big fan of the movie The White Chicks and stuff, but they were funny on In, in Living Color, and um, yeah, no, they're hilarious. Mm, oh, yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, yesterday just just converted me. That was just yeah. They yeah. Really <laughs> anyway, um, I don't know who's coming in tomorrow. I forgot to ask. Anthony. Oh, well, I'll tell you what, are we getting uh, Billy D. Williams? Is he coming back? Because obviously the same thing. We we haven't gotten a reschedule yet. By the way, Matt, are you putting in the computers over there? Once they're done? Okay, we'll talk because we'll need three. Okay. Um, no, we don't know yet if um, he's been rescheduled to come. Um, I'd imagine sometime he will be, but I don't know when exactly. Trav, sorry. It's not. It's not just for the sake of that. But yet, yesterday, um, there was that announcement. Well, D Disney have bought Lucasfilm, haven't they? And they're making three more Star Wars films. They're going to um, make them. Yeah, is that amazing? Yeah, yeah. I thought you'd be happy about that. I'm, I'm oh, a little, yeah. I'm, I'm, there's a lot of people that are a bit disappointed that it's Disney, but um, uh, well, they, they, they're not going to release them under Disney. They're going to release them under Lucasfilm. It's going to be the same, you know, the same thing. Yeah, but before. he's going to oversee, right? No, he sold the yeah, whole. I think that's better than whole... him. Burrito. Yeah, the, the, the problem with the prequels is the fact that he um, he. he just he wouldn't let anything. It was just him. He, he, as far as I um, understand, he wouldn't allow for much deviation from his own opinion. Whereas in this in this instance, there'd be other writers just writing around. Mm. Never mind. Oh. I, I, I'm I'm looking forward to it anyway. Yeah. Well, um, I, I'm, I'm looking, looking at the calendar forward. right now. Yeah. What's that? No, I was just I was agreeing with Travis. Like I, I can I, I I'm looking forward to the possibilities of what this could bring to the Star Wars franchise. Yes. George Lucas has apparently gone insane, and <laughs> yeah. yes. what? He has. No, 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 no. When did this happen? Was right. It's like they were horrid. Okay, tomorrow we have exhibit. I think. Oh, no way! <laughs> Who's exhibit? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Who's exhibit? He's a rapper. He's a, he's, a, he's a quality rapper. He did. He, did, he, did, he, did, he pimps you a ride and pulls a little collar off every time you get pimped. So. I think he well, I see him tentative for tomorrow, um, and he's in awesome. house. And then we have Richie Sambora, perhaps. Yeah. So those two for tomorrow. 
Exhibit. Um, exhibit. Exhibit. You know Here, where we take Tambora is, right? I'll give it to you because you're not going to know how to spell it, Kim. Hold on. We okay, have, thank you. Well, it, it, it tells you how to spell it. X to the Z exhibit. <laughs> we have Jenny Garth on Friday and Nancy Travis. Here you go, Kim. Ah, Nancy Travis. She's in yeah. one of my favorite comedy films of all time. Oh, it's I would not know how to spell it. Baby. Exactly. No, no, so, so I Married an Ex-Murderer, it's a Mike Myers film. Exactly. Oh, that one too, she was good. So I had to find it. <laughs> and now we have... Oh, Nancy. okay, I know who he is. I didn't know that was his name. Yeah. Exhibit. Um, let's see. I know him from movies. Uh-huh. He's He was in quite a lot of them. Mm-hmm. Um, let's see. The I Chronicles of Riddick. I don't see Billy D. Oh, no, Chronicles of Riddick, he was in the game, not the movie. He, he, he did okay. for the um, Chronicles of Riddick. Oh, gotcha. It, it, gotcha. It, it, it was good. Oh, okay. we have Michael Bolton, if anyone's interested in Michael hmm. Bolton. Um, Interesting. Yeah, why not? I mean, he's a, he's a legend, isn't he? Just sure. put his head off now as well, which is a good thing, so, yeah. Um, Breaking hmm. Dawn's uh, Twilight uh, Jackson Rathbone. Ooh, Twilight. I, know I don't know who he plays, though, <laughs> Jackson Rathbone. I don't know who he is in that. I forget. Like my, Aisha would know, but uh, she's not here. So Billy D. Williams was on NCIS last night. That's why he was supposed to be here um, the other day to promote uh, his, his episode. So he won't be coming back then. Yes. yes. There's no uh, reason for him to come back then now, is there? So we're gonna. Oh, good. Not right now. I was like, man, I would love to meet Billy D. <laughs> That'd have been yeah. Mahogany and Lady Sing the Blues. Um, What's that? Of course, Star Wars. You're those are movies he was in. He was in, he was in. he was in those movies with uh, Diana Ross. Oh, okay. That's later on. Next week. Hmm, that's it, really. Um, Naomi Harris, Nate Burkis. Maybe that will change. They haven't really filled in all the blocks here, you guys. So. Anyhow, okay. Well, I'm gonna go. Um, get ready for my ten o'clock. Okay. Okay. Now, holler. Have fun. See you tomorrow. See ya. Bye, y'all. See ya. Bye. Bye. <laughs>